Lesson 4.5 Estimate Quotients Using Compatible Numbers We can use compatible numbers to estimate quotients. We can choose a number that is close to the dividend and easy to divide by the divisor. Compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to compute with mental math. We have 22 divided by 5. We think. We need compatible numbers. 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. So 22 divided by 5 is about 4. We're estimating, so it's not exact. We can also use compatible numbers to find two estimates that the quotient is between. 22 divided by 5 is between 20 divided by 5 equals 4 and 25 divided by 5 equals 5. So the quotient is in between 4 and 5. Remember the parts of a division equation. The dividend is how many in all. And if the divisor is how many groups, then the quotient will be how many in each group. If the divisor represents how many in each group, then the quotient will represent how many groups. We can have 20 counters and put them into 5 groups with 4 in each group. We can also have 4 groups with 5 in each group. If our division equation is written like this, this is our dividend, this is our divisor, and our quotient is up here. Tala did 251 jumps in 4 minutes while jumping rope. About how many jumps did she do in 1 minute? So it says this is how many she did in 4 minutes. We have to find 1 minute. And we can use compatible numbers to find the answer, and our answer will be an estimate because of the word about. We need to estimate 251 divided by 4. So we think, what number, what compatible number is close to 251 that divides easily by 4? And we think we can use the fact 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. That would be 24 tens divided by 4 is equal to 6 tens. That would be 240 divided by 4 is equal to 60. We can also use 28 divided by 4 is equal to 7. That would be 28 tens divided by 4 is equal to 7 tens. 280 divided by 4 is equal to 70. And we see that 240 is closer to the 251 than it is to the 280. So this estimate of 60 would be a better estimate. So Tala jumped about 60 jumps per minute. We need to find two estimates that the quotient is between. We have 1,738 divided by 3. So we think, well, 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. 18 divided by 3 is equal to 6. We can think 15 hundreds divided by 3 is equal to 5 hundreds. That would be an estimate of 500. For this one, we can think 18 hundreds divided by 3 is 600, so we'd have an estimate of 600. 1,738 divided by 3 is between 500 and 600. And 1,738 is closer to 1,800. So 600 is a more reasonable estimate. But we did find the two estimates that the quotient is between. We need to estimate to compare and write less than, greater than, or equal to. And notice this symbol. This is the less than symbol. You can remember which symbol this is because it kind of looks like an L that's been slanted for less than. We have 789 divided by 4. We need to write less than, greater than, or an equal to sign here. We have 915 divided by 3. So we think this is very close to 800. So we can think 800 divided by 4 is equal to 200. For this one, we can think it's close to 900. That's compatible with a 3 because we can do 900 divided by 3 is 300. It's 300. We can see that this number is greater. So we know 789 divided by 4 is less than 915 divided by 3. Now we need to compare 
2,906 divided by 7 to 2,341 divided by 4. Thinking of compatible numbers, that 28 divided by 7 is equal to 4, we can think this is 2,800 divided by 7, that's equal to 400, and we can think of this as 2,400 divided by 4, which is equal to 600. We know that this is the greater quotient. We read this as 2,906 divided by 7 is less than 2,341 divided by 4. But be careful. When you're doing your homework or tests, just because a dividend is greater doesn't mean the estimate or the quotient is greater. We need to do the actual math and find the actual estimates. And the dividend, 2,906, is divided into more parts, so the estimated quotient is less. So do all the math you're supposed to do. Don't just try to look at the dividend and come up with the answer. The only thing you'll come up with is a wrong answer. A school received 108 new computers. 12 computers are for the school office, and the rest are for nine classrooms. About how many computers will each classroom get? So the first thing we need to do, because it's asking how many computers each classroom will get, we need to subtract the ones that are going to the office. We do 108 minus the 12. That tells us 96 are going to be going to the classrooms. We need to find an estimate of how many will go into each of nine classrooms. So we have 96 here divided by 9. And you may think, oh, I'm going to round this. But remember, we're using compatible numbers. The 6 would tell the 9 to go up to a 10, and it would turn into a 0. So that would estimate to 100. But that's not a compatible number with the 9. The most compatible one would be 90 divided by 9 equals 10. So each classroom will get about 10 new computers. Compatible numbers may be different numbers than rounding numbers to a place value. Here we have a word problem with a frequency table. So let's look at the table first. It says Mr. Lee's vegetables, and it tells us the type of vegetables and how many he has. And it says about how many times more tomatoes does Mr. Lee have to sell than zucchini? So these are all the vegetables he has to sell, the number of vegetables, their quantity. And we see we're comparing tomatoes to zucchini. There's 271 tomatoes and there's 43 zucchini. And we think of compatible numbers to estimate. We can think of 28 divided by 4 is equal to 7. This is close to 280. This is close to 40. That would be about 7. So he would have about seven times more tomatoes than zucchini. And you notice that onions and carrots were not important at all for this problem. Sometimes there'll be information in tables or word problems that are unimportant that we need to check them out, make sure they're not important, and then we ignore them. Now we have a new table. It says vegetable sales in five days. So these are the amount of vegetables he sold in five days. And it says about how many times more onions than zucchini did Mr. Lee sell in one day? So be careful. It says five days. The table shows five days of sales, so we need to divide these numbers by five to find one day. And onions are 198, so we can think that's about 200. The zucchini is 26, so we can think that's about 25, because we're dividing it by five 25 is compatible to divide by 5. Onions, we do 200 divided by 5, which is equal to 40. So he sold about 40 each day. Zucchini, we do 25 divided by 5, which is equal to about 5 each day. We can do 40 divided by 5 and see that he did about 8 times more onions than he did zucchini. Now it's asking about how many onions did Mr. Lee sell in three days. We know he did about 40 each day, so we can multiply 40 times 3, which is equal to 120. We know he sold about 120 
onions in three days. So the last thing we're going to talk about is cause and effect. Cause and effect can help us understand how one detail in a problem is related to another detail. Tala wants to buy a new bicycle that costs $178, and she earns $10 each week from babysitting. And since Tala doesn't have any money saved, she needs to decide which layaway plan she can afford to buy the new bicycle. So a layaway plan is a way to buy items in payments, and the store will hold the item until all payments are made. Our cause is that Tala doesn't have money saved to buy the bicycle. The effect is that she'll have to decide which layaway plan she can afford. We have a three-month layaway. The bicycle costs $178. We can estimate it to be $180. We divide it by the three months for the three-month layaway plan, and it's about $60 per month. For the six-month layaway plan, we would divide the 180 by six for the six months, and that would be about $30 per month. We need to know which one she can afford, and because she earns $10 each week, and there are about four weeks in each month, $10 times four weeks is $40. She can afford $40 each month. So she can't afford this layaway plan, that's $60 but she could afford the six-month layaway plan. Maybe if she can do more babysitting and make more money each week, she can get the bicycle sooner. So remember that compatible numbers are not the same as rounding a number to a place value, and they can help us estimate quotients. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.